Hello everyone. Nowadays where every, almost everything is turning to online and virtual modes. A very common problem any organization faces is the processing of receipt where which were scanned and submitted electronically for reimbursement purposes. Now for any claim or reimbursement to get clear, first those needs to be reached at the proper accounts department based on the organization and the sector and one way to perform this activity is by the manual intervention which means a person or team must go through all the digitally scanned receipts and filter them based on the departments or any other validation or eligibility criteria they may have and situation be uh, becomes more tragic when volume of such scanned receipts are too high so to get rid of this manual work, uh, a lot many organizations have already opted for the solution which is AI based and lot many are in process of doing so. Uh, definitely one can go for OCR technologies to extract data, but here problem is not only about data extraction. Here we also need uh, something which can do data interpretation for us because there could be an incident wherein user uploaded a wrong document altogether which is not a receipt. So situation should be, I mean, the solution should be robust enough to filter out all these scenarios. Coming on to the next slide, like many other Azure application here also, we have a solution on that side and the service is named as the Azure Form Recognizer, which consists of intelligent processing capabilities and allow us to automate these processing of forms and the documents. So basically, it is a combination of OCR and predictive models. So which in turn falls under the category of uh, which falls under the umbrella of Azure Cognitive Services itself. So OCR will work on the text extraction part and models will help us to filter out the required information like invoice date or receipt date, address, description, what all items were. Uh, sold and all those things. So all these uh, relevant information we can extract it using the models. Now Azure Form Recognizer supports two types of models. One is the pre-built and another one is the custom. So pre-built are the ones which are provided out of box and are already trained and ready for us to use and it works with the basic sales uh, data you can say. Whereas in terms of uh, whereas for custom models these are the ones which can be tailored by ourselves based on our need with our own data with our own rules. So in this video I will be focusing on pre-built model and will cover the custom model integration as part of another video. So let's get started by going on to the Azure portal. So here I'm on this Azure portal and you can reach it using portal.azure.com now to create a resource, uh, one way is to find out form recognizer. So when you will click here, you will get this option. You can go ahead and populate all the required fields. And another option which we have is like cognitive services. So if you have already created some resources for cognitive services, we can still go ahead and use that. Because at the end of the day, we just need an endpoint and the key. So in my case, I have already created one and I do have keys and endpoints over here. So we will go ahead and quickly utilize this one itself. After this thing, we need to start the development part. And for development this time, for a change, I am using VS Code and language would be Python. I have already installed Jupyter extension, so if you are not having it, you can go ahead and install it. First thing what I will be doing is I am going to command palette and creating a new Jupyter notebook. There are many ways you can use your own way to uh, create this notebook. It will take a minute or so. Okay. Let me first try out a statement to see whether the environment is configured properly or not. See, so if you are getting such kind of errors, it's always suggested to just type in some small command and check it out. 
so it is asking me to change the kernel so I would go with this one you may get this error you may not get this error based on the configuration you are having in your VS code okay so now it is working perfectly and we are good to go so the very first thing what we need to uh, declare here is the variable which will store key and the endpoint let's keep it empty for now and endpoint also I'm keeping it empty we'll populate it uh, based on the data which we are having inside the Azure portal now next thing is we need to import uh, the modules which we need for our development purpose so for importing the module what we can do is we can go to Google and search out that what all packages we need for this Azure AI so if you will Google this particular thing and you will get this link. So if you are already aware, you can directly go to pypi.org and just type it here. But if you are not sure, you can do it the way I am doing it. So I will go ahead and copy this thing. I will go to my terminal. Okay. And will quickly execute it here. So it is saying I have already, I mean requirement is already satisfied so it is not forcing me to reinstall it. Next thing what we need to do is we need to import. So one namespace I am taking it as, I mean one thing, I, one module I need is OS because I need to deal with file input output operations. And next thing I need is The Azure namespaces form recognizer, and here we can import the client. So, here we go. Next, one more thing we need to import is uh, because we are going to deal with the credentials which are in Azure. So, for that, again, we can go ahead and dot core dot credentials core dot credentials and here I will go ahead and import Azure key credentials well so we are done with our import part Next thing what we need is first, the very first thing what I will be doing is I'm going to create a client object. So for that, let's go ahead and create a variable. You can name anything, whatever you want. And it will be from form recognizer, form recognizer client. It will take parameter like endpoint, which we have already declared. So we can go ahead with that. Next would be the credential. So here we can directly and we'll pass key here. Well, so we are done with our client creation part. Next is we need a uh, image file path. So we will store some path where uh, receipt is uh, present or saved. And we can go ahead and create the file descriptor. So in this I'm going to open this file and the same variable name we can provide it and I want it to be in read mode so read binary we can keep it here perfect let's create another variable or let's name it analyze receipt and here we are going to make our actual call using the client object. So client dot begin recognize. So here you can see there are two methods. So if you are directly dealing with the image which is already hosted somewhere, you can give the URL. If you are having it on the local machine, then you can use the first one. So I'm going with the first option here 
and equal to we can provide a descriptor perfect so next comes the reading part here analyze receipt dot result so here we will get our result next thing is now we can go ahead and uh, sorry no semicolon next i will go ahead and print one of the field to just verify whether things are working as expected so let's give it name this and uh, result of i want uh, to go with the first element itself so fields dot get and here i can give merchant address and the last thing is value okay so first we will try this out how things are working and before that, we need to grab the three things, key and point and the image. So for image, and before that, I will go ahead and save this notebook somewhere. Okay, so let me make it form analysis. Something's already there. So reading receipts. And here I can say, Let's name it. Let's name it the read receipt. So this is my Python notebook which is saved. And in the same folder, I am already having two files. Maybe I can show you. This is the one which is already available on MSDN. And this is the one which I scanned it from my mobile phone. So let's see how this application is reading this file okay and before so here i can directly provide the name which is my image name there is two dot jpeg key and the value we can quickly grab it from our portal so i will copy this key paste it over here and endpoint you can find it at the bottom so let's do it and okay let's okay now it is saying something that we did some mistake no module found OS Okay, so now next one it is saying is from this import this credentials client So here it should be in small case now it should work It is still running, so just give it a minute. Okay, so uh, now we are able to retrieve the address. I can quickly show you what is the address in this. Okay, so if you will look at this, the merchant address is 461 and it is it has shown till this area. 8992, which is including our pin, area pin code and everything. So this is how we can extract the address. Similarly, we can go ahead and uh, extract dates and everything. So for that, I have already kept my code ready to save the time. So now here you can see, uh, we will see our uh, contact number, receipt date, tax speed and the total amount as an output. So let's run it. It will take few seconds okay so here it is now if we'll go ahead and compare this with the image we can see that the contact number see it is very smart so it is already identified that it is us number and added plus one accordingly whereas in receipt it's just four to five coming on to the text page so it is seven point two and the total amount paid is eighty seven point two zero 
So you have seen that how we have read all the information which is required. And next what we can do is let's try to do one more thing in which we will try to extract what all items uh, we bought it. So for that, here we may have to write few more lines of code to get that information. So I will write here itself. Let's create another variable items. And again, from result yield fields dot items we will take. And let's iterate it over this. Field in items. And uh, now I, I, we will check whether the thing which we are fetching is description or it is really the item or what else it is. So it's good to put this particular check and right now we are only interested in the name of the item we got it. So that's why we are checking name equal to items. For And now one more iterator we need here and we can give it item name and item items dot again it's a method so brackets we need to add and here we can get the print uh, thing printed whatever we are looking for so one we need is item name then we can probably go with this colon and item value. Okay, so let's give it a try and it should come up uh, with the name of the item this time. Let me keep it over here and run it. So it ran and we can see that this time it is showing the name of the item which is exactly what is mentioned in this image. So AX4026S and it's ending with GRY. So we can extract any detail whatever we need uh, out of uh, this particular receipt now before going ahead uh, i would like to mention one more thing is there is a very great documentation available who are here now let's uh, because we cannot remember what is the field name or what all things we need to extract so we can go ahead and just google it this thing and you will get all the supported fields. So what all things you can extract out of any receipt. So these are the fields which we can uh, read from the receipt. So that's you can see that here are items, merchant phone number, name and address which we have took, transaction date, tax and everything. And the very interesting part is uh, we did this demo for the receipt but we are not restricted only to receipt. Pre-built model also supports business card. If you have anything like this you can go ahead and scan it and the api will identify similarly invoices you can do it and you can also go ahead and analyze or read text out of these uh, documents also so that's all i have for today hope you enjoyed uh, extracting text using the pre-built models and in my next video i will be com covering how we can go with the custom models with our own data with our own rules. Thank you.